This week it gives me great privilege to welcome the belt collector. He is, of course, the reigning, defending, undisputed Impact World Champion, the Impact Grand Champion, and no doubt a few other titles in his arsenal as well. Austin Aries, welcome to the teleconference. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Well, we can hear you perfect. Austin, uh, how are things going for you? Not too bad. Just got done with a, uh, a good workout, and now just uh, enjoying some of the beautiful weather out here in Vegas. All righty. Well, Austin, a lot to talk about, and let's get right to it. Sunday night, April 22nd in Orlando, Florida, you will be in the main event at Redemption, live on pay-per-view against two of the biggest stars of Lucha Underground. You put the world championship on the line against Pentagon Jr. and Phoenix. Your thoughts? I mean, <clears throat> listen, it's going to be an exciting matchup. Uh, you know, these two guys right now, some of those talked about competitors going. Uh, you know, obviously got to step in the ring with them during the uh, joint show between Impact Wrestling and, and Lucha Underground. Uh, you know, and as I said in, 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 uh, in my promo that I, you know, spoke about at House of Hardcore, you know, Pentagon came out victorious. Those guys showed up. They left it all in the ring. They're professionals, and they deserve an opportunity. So we're going to give it to them at Redemption on the 22nd, and uh, should be a hell of a matchup. Awesome. Let's talk about these two guys. Pentagon, submission specialist, five sides of fear, the breaker of bones. Then there's Phoenix, a high-flying sensation. Uh, mm -hmm. Pentagon and Phoenix, they've waged wars against each other, but they've also aligned with each other. They are the Lucha Brothers. How do you combat these two? Uh, well, you know, as you said, <clears throat> they both have different styles, and uh, and obviously they both know each other very well. And I'd be lying if I didn't say I'm a big concern that, you know, considering that they are brothers, I know they don't always uh, see eye to eye, but, uh, you know, in some ways I may feel like I'm a, I'm a bit outnumbered. Uh, you know, I'm used to having a target on my back, but here I'm going to have two guys who know each other very well, um, bringing two different styles, and, and I'm sure uh, both of them would like to walk away as the Impact World Champion. Also, I have to ask you about the mental game going into this. Um, you stepped in the ring with them at WrestleCon, but you did not come out with the victory. Sure, you didn't get pinned or you didn't submit, but you didn't win. You don't have a lot of time to prepare for this. How are you feeling mentally going into this? I, I mean, I feel good. You know, l l listen, uh, you know, things change. And, uh, you know, that's, that's part of life. That's inevitable. And, you know, part of what makes a great uh, professional wrestler, part, part of what makes us a successful person in general is uh, being able to, you know, move, move when you need to move, be able to, you know, uh, be lim limber, agile, and, uh, you know, roll with the punches, so to speak. So, you know, listen, I'm feeling good. It was a really successful weekend uh, in New Orleans. Uh, I came out of that feeling relatively healthy. Uh, I've got a nice week now uh, or two to recharge. Uh, you know, get myself mentally and physically prepared, and uh, you know, I expect to walk into the 22nd uh, ready to rock and roll. All righty, Austin. Before we open up for media questions, we do want to ask you though: uh, Will you be reaching out over the next 10, 11 days to others on the Impact roster, Sanjay Dutt, maybe even Sammy Callahan, who've stepped in the ring in the past with Pentagon Jr. and Phoenix, just for uh, additional insight, tips, suggestions? No, nah, not really, because I don't really necessarily trust any of those people. I'll uh, I'll do my own. I'll do my own studying on my own. I, I trust my eyes, and, and uh, you know there may be a person or two that I confide in, but but for the most part, I have to keep that stuff close to the vest. All righty, Austin. I appreciate it. We're going to get going with some media questions here. Media asks uh, once again, as always, please identify yourself, your media outlet, and please limit it to one question at a time. To get in queue for questions, please hit star six. Q&A session has started. To ask your question, please press star 6. Austin, Harry here from the Sports Radio Pro Wrestling 247. Speak up a little bit, sir. Oh, this is Harry from NBC Sports Radio Pro Wrestling 247 on demand. Uh, first hey, Harry. Off, thank you for the great performance at Lucha vs. Impact in New Orleans last Friday. And my question is, with the ever-changing state of things recently in the world of professional wrestling, now that Lucha Underground talent will be a part of the main event at Redemption on the 22nd, 
Have you considered challenging for the Lutz Underground Championship? Uh, I'll be honest, it hasn't really crossed my mind. You know, we'll, uh, one thing at a time, Harry. I got a big match up here, obviously. You know, I was kind of preparing for one direction. Now, now I'm having to kind of prepare for another direction. So, listen, uh, you know, once I walk out of there, you know, the 22nd, still the Impact Champion, um, you know, then maybe I can start thinking about challenging for, for the, you know, Lucha title. But right now I'm just going to take care of uh, what's in front of me. Radio. Ryan Ryder for Main Event Radio. Austin Aries, uh, your thoughts on the departure of Alberto El Patron? Uh, you know, it's unfortunate, but we're moving on, you know, and, uh, you know, all things being equal, I thought the matchup I ended up having uh, at the joint show ended up being uh, more challenging, uh, you know, and, and more exciting. So we're, we're moving forward. We're looking forward to the 22nd and, uh, you know, really trying to capitalize on some, you know, again, some things that maybe, a year or two ago, we, we wouldn't be talking about in the wrestling landscape. And, you know, we're, we're going to have a couple of the top stars of Lucha Underground, you know, competing for the Impact World Championship. That's pretty exciting. Any other companies that you'd like to partner with in the future? I'm looking to work with any company that, you know, that, 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 that's interested. You know, I've, I've talked to a number of companies. Obviously, you've seen me, you know, pop up other places like Ring of Honor. I've had discussions with the NWA. Uh, you know, have reached out, uh, you know, some to New Japan. Um, you know, so, you know, but that being said, I can only be so many places at once, and I can only represent so many companies at once. And right now my focus is on representing Impact Wrestling the best that I can. Hi, Austin. It's James over at the Wrestling Epicenter. It's a pleasure to talk to you today. Thanks, I James. wanted to ask you about the weekend that we just had where you were yeah. part of multiple shows i mean it just seems like it was just a raging success for professional wrestling as a wrestler who's been around the indies and now has been around what whatever we call the current wave of things going on mm-hmm. how do you feel about the current landscape of professional wrestling oh man it's 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 really unlike anything i've seen since you know since i started and uh, it's a beautiful thing and and listen first and foremost uh you know we have to give the credit because if wwe wasn't running WrestleMania with 100,000 wrestling fans all, you know, all conver- convening in the same location, um, what happened in New Orleans wouldn't be possible. That being said, uh, the fact of the matter is that outside of, of that, you know, the WWE bubble, uh, there's wrestling fans that want to consume all different types of forms of professional wrestling. And the awesome thing is now is that there's so many companies that are providing quality professional wrestling. There's so much talent out there. And, uh, and you can see there was, you know, so many successful shows that were run over the course of those three, four days. Uh, everybody I talked to, uh, you know, we're having a, a very good financial weekend uh, for a lot of these guys, the biggest weekends of the year for them. And uh, that's just a great thing for wrestling, man, because at the end of the day, you want as many people who love this art form to be able to make a good living as we can. And the more, and the more successful and profitable places are, the more competition there is, uh, the more those spots are available. Thank you. Thank you. Hi Austin, it's Neil Rogers from Calling Sports Magazine. Um, how are you doing? Great, thank you. Good to hear. Um, my question is, most people will never experience being a world champion, and yet for you it seems to be something that you do every other day. How, how does it feel to be regarded as one of the best in the world? Uh, I don't know, I guess I, I don't really think, of like, think about it in, in, in those terms. Uh, that's, you know... I, where I rank as far as best or worst is that's, that's people's opinion. Um, you know, I just try to go out there every time and, and, and just deliver the best of my capabilities with whatever I'm given, you know, and I feel like the, the more I'm able to contribute, um, you know, creatively, the more I'm able to contribute from a, a mental aspect into what do I do? Um, it, it seems to, it seems to be even better. So, uh, listen, I always, appreciate the opportunity to be someone who is a key figure in a promotion to be someone who can you know be an ambassador and uh so right now i'm very lucky to be in a position that especially with the landscape that wrestling's in right now to find myself in the spot to be representing a number of companies and and all and also trying to you know represent um this mindset of, of companies working together to continue to build on this momentum that the professional wrestling world has right now thank you Hi Austin, it's Lee Med from Live Radio over here in the UK. Thanks for taking the time this morning. 
Uh, it's just a very quick one. You, obviously, you are the, the collector of belts. You perform all around the world. And, and here in the UK, we're very excited about Impact Wrestling. We're turning to the UK uh, for the first time in a number of years. But as a performer, where do you get the most enjoyment of performing? Is it Asia? Is it the, the US? Or is it over in Europe? Uh, I, I don't know that it's maybe a geography thing, right? Uh, because, you know, when I go over to England, the fans there are, are, you know, they got so much energy. That's always been one of the great, great places for Impact Wrestling. One of our great, you know, fan bases has been in, in the UK. And, and, and those tours every year were always so successful. Uh, you know, going to Australia, those fans over there, you know, they, they're, you know, historically they haven't had a lot of great wrestling over there. We're starting to get some big names that maybe, you know, people are really excited to see. And, and so, so that's a great market too. But, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, you know, I, I think there's different types of wrestling crowds. And I think that, you know, we have our, what we call our smart audience that maybe try to analyze and break down the art form a little, a little more. And that's where they get their entertainment value. And then I have, you know, then you have what you just kind of consider just kind of your, um, mainstream fan who just really you know, maybe you're more your family oriented fan that just wants to come to the show and, and uh, they don't understand the the ins and outs necessarily uh, but they just want to cheer and they want to boo and they just want to have a good time right and um, if you're asking me like I really appreciate going out in front of those types of crowds and just taking them on that emotional roller coaster of of you know cheering and booing and screaming and yelling um, and, and maybe not breaking down my technique of everything that I do in the ring uh, or, or time on matches or, you know, decide how many stars it warrants. No, we're looking forward to having you back over here in the UK. Thanks for taking the time, my friend. Thank you. Austin, we have an email question from Jerome. He asked, have you ever seen a move or a spot that made you think, I wish I came up with that? Ooh. Hmm. Off the top of my head, I mean, I know there are. I just can't think of what they were off the top of my head. Uh, you know, let me let me try to think. So, the running. How about the the, the running drop kick in the corner? You know. Oh wait, maybe I did kind of come up with that. Hold on. Uh. Yeah, I mean, there, there's been some over the years. You know, a lot of times it's not necessarily maybe not necessarily maneuver. Uh, but maybe something creatively from a from a psychological standpoint uh, that that maybe you go that was pretty clever. Uh, maybe I wish I would have came up with that one. Um, but as far as you know, as far as maneuvers in and of themselves, I think more likely I see something, especially what some of these guys do nowadays. And it's not so much I wish I would have came up with it; it's I wish I could do that. <laughs> Hi, Austin. This is BQ from the Impact Lounge. Um, I feel like you're becoming one of the more respected and obviously well-traveled stars in wrestling. And one thing that Impact hasn't had much success in over the years, as say maybe a ring of honor, is being able to sign some of the hotter indie names who have that potential to generate buzz and really put butts in seats. Uh, you mentioned sure. being an ambassador. Are, are you hoping to be you know, maybe a late liaison between Impact and other wrestlers who have previously may not have the interest in coming to the company for one reason or another? Yeah, I think I'm someone that can do that because I think, uh, you know, A, I've, I've had a history with this company. You know, I've been here through different, from different regime changes and things of that sort. And I think the people who know me the best um, <clears throat> know that I wouldn't be back here if, if a lot of what the old, you know, the old guard and the old hat kind of was, was perpetuating was still going on. Um, and I think people, whether they like me or they don't like me, know I'm a pretty straight shooter. So I think from those regards, you know, I, you know, I can give people a pretty unbiased opinion of what I think uh, it's happening right now in Impact Wrestling. I think, you know, and, and, and I'll be honest, I, I, I didn't think I'd be saying this uh, a year or two years ago or five years ago, but right now I think from a um, from a, uh, just an overall cultural standpoint, uh, from a locker room standpoint, from coming to work and having fun and being relaxed, uh, taking our job seriously but not looking over our shoulder, not walking on eggshells, not being stressed out, not, you know, and, and really having some creative freedoms. Um, I think this might be the best locker room in wrestling. And uh, because you have, you have this great mix of guys like myself who have kind of been there, done that, who are hungry for their own reasons to prove themselves. Then you have a bunch of younger guys who are also you know, getting their first taste of maybe a national spotlight to step up, and they're hungry. And then you have a whole new team, you know, coming in from, you know, Scott and Don and Sanjay and the guys, um, you know, that really want to prove themselves and really do want to make this different and, 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 and make this something uh, that can be great and that people can come and have a good living. 
And, uh, and we're going to create our own culture and our own structure here and our own way to do business and our own way to have relationships with companies, have relationships with talent to create something that's appealing and unique that, you know, when you talk about being able to sign guys that have potential or be able to keep guys who have some value, if you can offer them a work environment <clears throat> that, uh, that, there, that it's very hard to find in this industry as far as, you know, be able to make good money, be able to keep your intellectual properties, be able to come to work and have a good time and not be walking on eggshells. Uh, you know, looking over your shoulder constantly, uh, having some input on your direction, your character, who you are, uh, this is the place to be. And, that, and I want to keep building that so that this is the place to be to give people an opportunity and an option who don't want to have to do it the other way. Thank you. Hey, Askin. Uh, this is Vijay from Sportskira. How are you doing today? Doing very well. Thank you. Great. Uh, we had a chance to catch up with uh, your friend Jimmy Jacobs on one of these teleconferences, and he said that the best Austin Aries is the heel Austin Aries. Is that something you're looking forward to doing in the future? I may need you to repeat that one more time. I'm getting my Google yes. Translate. Uh, just, hold on. <laughs> Please repeat one more Hello? time. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so essentially, uh, we had a chance to catch up with your friend, uh, Jimmy Jacobs, and he said that uh, you are at your best as a heel. Is that something you're looking forward to doing in the future? Uh, you know, as far as that goes, you know, right now, uh, you know, it's working, it's working for me to, to uh, you know, I, I try to always just kind of be myself, um, and, and I don't really try to, I, I don't really try to, you know, skew too much one way or the other. Um, but yeah, there's a certain times I kind of dial up my disdain for people and, uh, and, and, uh, you know, but right now I'm, um, I'm enjoying, uh, you know, kind of, to be quite honest, I'm enjoying, uh, be, being embraced by the people and, uh, and for what I'm trying to do and the success I'm having. And for right now, I think that's, uh, you know, that's the way to go. And, you know, uh, what happens in the future happens in the future when it's time to put my thumb in somebody's eye, uh, it may happen. And it will be fun. Hi, Austin. Uh, Ryan Bowman from the com. You were talking about having freedom, and I've heard from a few people in the company that, especially on promos, they feel like they've been given a lot more range to kind of explore things. How important is it to have your quote-unquote own voice when you're trying to communicate with the crowd and get your point across? Um, I mean, for me, it's very important because, you know, I, I, I would say this, if you, if you strip away everything that makes Austin Aries unique, which is really my voice, my wit, um, you know, maybe some of my moveset, maybe, you know, just some of these things that make me unique. Um, if you strip that away, I'm just kind of an older, small white dude, you know, and there's not a lot, there's not a lot to work with there. Right. So for me, it's important to, to be able to go out and do what's made me successful for 17, 18 years, because it's been a journey of figuring out what that is for me, you know, and, and to change it up at this point in the game, um, to me, uh, it's not, it's not getting full value out of me. It's not using me for, for my full potential. And, uh, but I think for everybody, listen, when we go out there, if I'm going to fail or I'm going to succeed, I want it to be because of, of my own, my own merits. Right. You know, and uh, we all have to work within we all have to work within guidelines. We all have to work together. And there needs to be a certain level um, of continuity and quality control. But I think, you know, as as the people kind of running directing creative, as you kind of look at your landscape of your roster, you kind of identify the guys that you need to maybe produce a little less because it's they can they can do them better than you can do them and then the guys that are still finding a way that are younger that really do need the guidance and the help to kind of help create who they are and find that and so you can't treat everybody the same in that regard and i think right now with impact finding that balance uh is has been something that's really helped us in allowing you know guys the freedom to, to have their voice out there and then helping shape and direct where it needs to be shaped and directed Also, we're going to go to an uh, email question from Jordan, who asked, uh, would you con consider rejoining the X Division, and who is your uh, all-time, uh, basically wants to know your Mount Rushmore of X Division talent? 
Oh, boy. Um, would I rejoin the X division? I mean, I'll, I'll rejoin any division if, if it makes sense, right? Uh, so I certainly have no problem with that. Uh, right now I'm just trying to do something I haven't done before. And uh, as we know, um, I've, I've done a lot in the X division. Uh, and with that, I probably would have to put myself on there uh, somewhere. But I think, I think uh, you know, before, before myself, you have to go to, you know, Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels. Uh, I think, you know, you know, I think those three guys and, and kind of when they got the spotlight to do their three-way uh, program really elevated the X division, um, you know, and I don't know how many guys you can add because you can add a couple other guys on there too for, for different reasons that have been important to the division over the years. So, uh, but if I'm going to name four, uh, I guess I'll go with those four. Hi, Austin. Stephanie from Steel Chair Magazine in UK. I uh, hope you are right. Um, I'm coming a little late in the call because I had technical issues, but I hope I'm not going to ask you a question uh, that was already um, asked. Uh, but um, so you had a great, you're going to have a great opportunity again, the um, Pentagon Dark and um, uh, Phoenix, Ray Phoenix on uh Redemption, um, but Pentagon Dark is the Lucha Underground champion, and I was asking myself, are, are you interested to work with Lucha Underground, and why not become Lucha Underground champion? And well, you know, if Continue, sorry. I wanted to wish you a few days earlier an happy birthday. Oh, well, thank you so much. I, I do appreciate <laughs> that. Um, yeah, someone, someone touched on that earlier about that. And, you know, you, you make an interesting point that, you know, uh, he, he is the Lucha Underground champion. And uh, it'd be interesting if maybe I, I, I made him put up his title, uh, you know, uh, in this three-way. Uh, that, that would be fair, right? Or, or at least somewhat fair. But uh, I, I'm interested in working with Lucha Underground. I think, I think right now it's a good relationship for both companies. And, uh, you know, right now as the champion, uh, that would put me squarely in the mix. Uh, to not only be working with them, but sure, uh, I, I would challenge for the title in the right in the right scenario. But right now, my job is to make sure I keep mine on the 22nd of April. But hey, if Pentagon wa uh, Pentagon wants to put up his title, I, I certainly want I certainly want to pose. I'd like to collect another belt. Ah, uh -huh, Mr. Aries, uh, this is uh, Marcus Green from Total Wrestling Magazine. Hello, Marcus. Uh, Hi. Um, obviously, one of the many shows that we we seen you um, appear on on WrestleMania weekend uh, was uh, Ring of Honor Super Card of Honor, which you were great on commentary, by the way, pun intended. Thank um, you. Yeah. Uh, now, now, obviously, that's one of the the companies that you returned to. You had a great stint there. Um, you know, great title reign, great title reigns, and whatnot. But you now are kind of getting involved around, obviously, having your sights set now that you're the bell collector around regaining or for the first time attaining the Ring of Honor Television Championship. Exactly. Uh, my question, yeah, my, my question is, um, you know, obviously, you know, that, that one of the benefits now that Impact has is having all these working relationships with different wrestling companies. Um, have you, my question is, have you seen some of the positive changes since you returned to Ring of Honor in that company that you've seen in Impact? And if so, if it was possible in the future, would you like to see those two companies uh, collaborate? Uh, well, obviously, I mean, you know, going back to Ring of Honor, uh, just, you know, stirring the pot a little bit. And, yeah, I've never had the television championship there. And, uh, I mean, what better way to make an impact as the Impact World Champion than to be on their television? It's kind of the way I thought about it. Um, but, yeah, obviously, their success right now, I mean, they just, they're almost 6,000 people, uh, you know, in New Orleans. Um, you know, I, I think their business is, is as good as it's ever been. So, you know, right now, um, I'm just, I'm trying to, you know, I, I'm trying to go around and do what I can do. And, uh, you know, it's been, it's been cool to have an opportunity to, to kind of do some stuff with Ring of Honor, you know, to kind of make people scratch their head a little bit and wonder what's going on. And I think that's good for wrestling. And I think, you know, right now, as far as how much they do or don't do business now or in the future, uh, you know, I'm sure those companies will, will you know, will, will discuss that and figure out what, what's in the best interest for, for both of them. But 
right now if I can kind of be a common thread that helps maybe, you know, build some bridges, uh, then, that, then that's uh, what I'd like to do. So you can start calling me the bridge builder. Also, I have an email question from Septile Project. Kind of an interesting two-part question. What do you think music in a, a wrestler's entrance, what does that impact have on, uh, on wrestling as a whole and that uh, mm-hmm. character? Uh, I mean, it's huge, right? I think, I think it plays a lot into it. Um, you know, I think uh, it can be huge, right? I think that, you know, there's certain songs you hear. I know as a kid growing up, when they still used, you know, back then you have to worry about copyrights and things like that, but when I heard certain songs, whether it was Eye of the Tiger or Iron Man, I immediately thought of wrestlers, you know, so you start to identify, and obviously music's a huge part of culture, so whenever you cross over like that, uh, you know, it just adds to the to the impact and, and the overall emotion. So, you know, and it's also for the wrestler, you got to think of like when you're going for a workout, you know, you want something that gets you pumped up or gets you in whatever zone you need to be in to walk out there and perform. Uh, you know, and then f- for for the fans, you know, they hear that iconic sound, whether it's the, the glass shattering or, or, or whatever it may be. And, uh, you know, it, it obviously elicits an emotion for them. So music's a, hu- a huge part of wrestling. Hi, Austin. This is Raj Gary with WrestlingInc.com. Hello. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm all right. Thank you. Good. I just wanted to ask you, uh, with the WrestleCon event on Friday, about when did you realize that Alberto wasn't going to be there? And uh, do you feel that affected the match at all with uh, Phoenix and Pentagon, and, uh, or if at all? Uh, you know, it was sometime during the event because I don't always see Alberto a lot once the event starts. You know, sometimes he may be off uh, in his own area. So, you know, but, you know, with him being a professional as such as he is and, and everybody else involved, I, I wasn't overly concerned. But as the event was going, I did inquire if, if anybody had, you know, seen him or where, where, his, where his location was. And that's when, uh, you know, we, we decided that, uh, or when I realized, we realized that he hadn't arrived yet. So um, as far as it affecting the match, I don't, I don't really think so. Uh, you know, listen, both those guys are hell of, t- hell of, hell of talents. And, and for me, uh, you know, for me, it was just trying to, uh, you know, again, change gears. And, you know, first time really working with either of these guys and, and, and getting in the ring with them. So, uh, but I don't really think it affected the match so much. Um, I, I was really happy with, uh, you know, with, with what we went out there and did. Other than, obviously, the outcome, because I would have liked to have won. Uh, because then uh, maybe I wouldn't find myself in this situation now. Austin, your answer seems to follow into uh, a question from uh, Andre Corbiel of WrestlingWithWrestling.com, who first apologized he could not be on the call, and then he wanted to know, uh, okay. there were obvious signs of animosity between the Pentagon and uh, Phoenix in, in, uh, at the WrestleCon match. How do you plan to use that natural animosity between the two to your advantage on the 22nd at Redemption? Very smartly. Very, very intelligently. Uh which includes not laying the whole plan out for you right here on this teleconference. Uh, but yeah, listen, uh, obviously these guys have a history and, and there's a lot of emotion involved, uh, due to their relationship. So, um, I have to, I have to manipulate and use everything to my advantage that I can, including that. And, uh, that, you know, that's, that's going to be part of my game plan. Hello, Austin. Uh, this is Nick Hausman from WrestleZone.com. Thanks so much for taking the time today. You got it, Nick. Thanks for being here. Uh, so, former Impact Wrestling champion Kurt Angle uh, decided to name drop TNA on Monday Night Raw and told Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn that maybe they should uh, ask TNA uh, about going there or inquire about that. What did you think about WWE name dropping the uh, the former initials for the company? Uh, I mean, I didn't think a whole lot of it. I mean, uh, I think every wrestling company is hiring. Uh, they've obviously done quite a bit of hiring themselves over the last six months. Uh, I think that's what wrestling companies do. Someone should probably give them a memo and update them that, you know, TNA no longer exists. So their, their, their writing team was a little outdated on the joke. But, uh, hey, it's cool, man. Yeah, we are hiring. And if you come here, like, we won't test you uh, and take money out of your pocket for smoking marijuana. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of perks to come in here. So, yeah, you know, uh, it's all about what you want out of your career and for your life. 
and uh, we're trying to provide something that's an alternative, uh, you know, and the funny thing is, is that uh, you're asking that question. It's one of the most talked about things that happened on that show. Yep, that's why I asked the question. Thank you uh, very much for taking it. Yes, sir. Hello, Austin. This is Miosh from the German site wrestling-infos.de. It's a pleasure to talk to you today and that you have taken the time for us. Um, my question is uh, related to your opinion, and uh, you've also published a book which is quite successful, as I heard. How much did uh, the veganism help you in your wrestling style or generally in life? I think it's just... Um Yeah, it's a lifestyle choice, and I think it's, you know, what I've come, kind of come to notice when people, when people kind of make that switch or make that connection, it's just about viewing things differently, viewing life a little differently, viewing um, your role on the planet, uh, and, and just kind of looking at things from a different scope and a different lens. You know, our dietary choices and the way we think about animals and how we use them or, um, you know, if we, if we love them or if we, you know, exploit them is... It's really a learned behavior, and uh, it's kind of indoctrinated into us. It's not necessarily a choice. So if you can kind of disconnect from that from that decision that was made for you and, and see that a, a DOG is the same as a PIG, same as a CAT, C, same as a COW, and, uh, and that they all should deserve respect, um, then it just kind of changes your whole worldview and how you see things. It's a little more of a compassionate mindset. Hi Austin, it's Lee Med from Live Radio again. Uh, I'm just thinking, you know, you've you've been entertaining all throughout your career, but one of the things I really enjoyed was the time you spent as part of the uh, the Dirty Heels. Of course, you had some great mm. success picking up the, the the tag team titles with that. But over the past maybe about 18 months, there seems to have been a a disappearance of of true tag team performers. Do you feel that's something that is is missing just now, or will it come back around in the world that the, the way the wrestling world is cyclical? Uh, I, I think there's still some. I still think there's good tag team performers and good tag teams that are, for the most part, uh, you know, strictly tag teams. I think. I think what's happened is that you know, with the way wrestling is going, sometimes we don't keep tag wrestling to just the tag division because we put a lot of other tag matches together with singles guys and things of that sort. Um, you know, because we have so many, you know, so many matches and television and things, mm. things of the sort. But, uh, you know, I still think there's a lot of good tag team specialists out there. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a little different psychology. It's a different style of match. And uh, I hope it doesn't go away because it was some of my favorite stuff to grow up and watch. How easy is it to, to jump between that, that singles and that tag mindset? As, as you just said, there, sometimes we get the, the single guys thrown together. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll be honest. Like, I, I really enjoy tag wrestling. I, I'd actually, I'm actually kind of looking for a partner that I think I'd gel with and, and, and maybe to do something like that, you know. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I'm someone who I like to think is necessarily a singles wrestler or a tag wrestler. I'm just a wrestler, and, and I can hopefully do whatever, uh, whatever style I need to do. Cheers. Hey, Jim Barcelona, MiamiHerald.com. Austin, with Redemption coming up, the big pay-per-view, can you talk about if you were disappointed that you won't have your first match with Alberto Del Rio and just any excitement with having this three-way and how you're preparing to do battle in a three-way rather than just a one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah, I think, hey, Jim, I, th I think it's both, right? I think I'm, I'm extremely disappointed that I'm not going to be able to get in there with Alberto. Uh, you know, I was really looking forward to that, and um, but... As you said, now you know switching gears, moving forward, I'm I'm really excited for for this new matchup, and it is a whole different matchup. It's a whole different strategy. It's a whole different emotion. You know, there was some animosity with me and Alberto. There was, you know, obviously there's a size difference between the two of us, and stylistically there's a difference. Um, so now this is a whole different whole different game plan, and this match can be completely different, and it's going to be probably you know a lot, a lot more faster paced, a lot more exciting, um, a lot more unpredictable. You know, when you add a third element in there. So, you know, um, you know, sometimes things work out in funny ways, and, uh, and in some ways I feel like maybe what we're going to have here on the 22nd is, is actually going to be uh, even better than, than what was going to happen. Thank you.
Austin Harry here again from NBC Sports Radio's Pro Wrestling 247 On Demand. In January, I'll be turning 50, and I've noticed that I began to gain a little weight over the last few years. Mm -hmm. I've never been a eater. However, I'm at that age when the body's metabolism begins to change. What benefits would I notice if I were to adopt a vegan diet, and what would you recommend, if anything, to aid me in doing so? Oh, man. Uh, I mean, without really knowing your diet now, but, I mean, the, the benefits w w would be significant, uh, and, and you would see them probably within the first, you know, few weeks. Um, just as far as fat loss, you know, uh, you're going to completely reduce your cholesterol intake, which will do a lot of things for you, um, amongst other things. Uh, you're, you're, a lot of people say they have, you know, they feel an instant surge in energy. They feel better after they eat. They don't feel heavy and lethargic. I mean, there's a lot of things, you know, um, that that you'll feel. Uh, I, I think the whole thing is, people say is it hard, and and it is hard. Um, until you make that commitment and decide it's something important to you. And for a lot of people like yourself, it, it comes at a time when, when, it, when they're faced with the reality of getting older and, and now they feel like they have to, you know. And, um, you know, but it's never too late to start. And I would just, again, we're in the information age. So there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of people like myself who are thriving, living plant-based diets. Uh, they all have their social medias. They're sharing the information. So go out there and seek it out and give yourself the information, the tools to start on your own journey and start slow and just consistent. And, uh, you know, don't worry about being perfect. Just worry about keep making progress. On that note, where would I be able to locate your uh, book so that I could purchase it for more advice? Uh, right now you can go to my new website, theaustinaries.com. And uh, if you go there, you can get uh, all the information. You can buy my book from there. It will direct you to everything you need to know. And you can also see some recipes and some blogs and some tips on, on, on healthy eating and uh, also find out, you know, where I'm going to be coming up here with my schedule and everything. Thank you for your time, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, hey, uh, Ricky from Sports Kid again. My question is, uh, because everyone wrestles a much faster pace style these days, do you see a distinction between the heavyweight division and the X-Division anymore? Uh, you know, not, not necessarily. You know, I think... You know, I think there's plenty of guys who, you know, who would be classified as, you know, quote-unquote heavyweights um, in, in all the companies right now that wrestle more of what we, you know, historically thought of as an X-Division style or, you know, so, um, you know, so there really isn't a huge distinction stylistically, you know, and uh, and that can be said for all the different, you know, and, and the things with the X-Division is, I don't know, if there's, you know, unlike other places, there's no weight limits on it. So, um, you know, the definition of what it is to me has always been, a little confusing, uh, but but then again, it's very important uh, as a secondary title within the company. But yeah, I think there's more and more big guys that are working more of that X division style, and who knows, maybe they'll get mixed back in there, uh, you know, in the future. Hi, it's Neil Rogers from Calling Sports Magazine again. Um, my my question this time: uh, What are your thoughts on? In agenda wrestling, do you think there's a place for it in today's era? Or do you think it's something that is becoming more um, prevalent? Um, well, I mean, obviously, there's there's a place for it somewhere because it's happening. Um, you know, so so people are doing it. Uh, I think that you know it's a slippery slope, and, and uh, you know, personally, I'm I'm not a huge fan uh, of it. Um, that's something I would I would intentionally go out and and seek out. But you know, I also understand that you know how I, you know, my entertainment value of wrestling or, or, or my vision of what wrestling is is different than other people's, and I can respect that other people see it differently. And if, you know, hey, if there, if there wasn't a market for it, it wouldn't be happening. So, um, but, you know, I think it's a slippery slope, especially in today's, in today's landscape where we're so sensitive with, you know, uh, you know equality and, and treatment of women and, and, and all these other things that be very careful when we blow the line for what, you know, our art form, you know, uh, it, 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 it's a delicate balance. Austin, hi, this is Tony Quant calling from the Mirror Sport in the UK. I hope you're well. Thanks, Tony. Um, my question was around the upcoming impact announcements that they are bringing the live shows back to the UK in September. And um, I didn't notice that your name was actually part of the press release. I just wondered whether you'll be taking part in that tour and how excited, if, if so, how excited you are to be returning to the UK with impact. 
Uh, I certainly hope so. You know, I certainly hope that, uh, you know, come September, if I'm still in a position, that, you know, I would be a part of that tour. And then, and if I am, uh, you know, it's something I'll definitely be looking forward to. As I said earlier, um, you know, the, the UK Impact fans have always been some of our most loyal and our most enthusiastic. So, uh, you know, I'm really excited that the company's heading back there. Austin, we have a question via email from Shubham. He wants to know, what is your favorite career moment in Impact? Uh, favorite career moment? Um, I mean, you know, obviously winning the world title is going to be a special moment for any wrestler. Um, and, and that certainly was. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, funny enough, when I lost the world title to Jeff Hardy in, in uh, Phoenix, that was a pretty memorable moment as well. Um, for, for a number of reasons. Uh, so those two kind of stand out uh, probably as, as two of the more memorable. Hi, Austin. Stephanie for Future Magazine again. Um, you've been involved in three different events uh, during WrestleCon for Crash, for El Salvatico, and Impact vs. Lucha Underground. Um, mm-hmm. Is there any... Differences. What are the differences? The, the things um, between these three different events. Uh, what What are the good things? What are the the, um, the differences? Can you tell tell us about uh, these three different events? Events and what they are bringing you, bringing to you. Thank you. Sure. Um, I think I think you're asking me the you know the difference between the the, the different places I work. Uh, in New Orleans, um, you know, so, you know, it was my first time working with, with, uh, with Crash Lucha Libre and obviously, you know, they, they, uh, you know, they had a good, a good turnout for, for an afternoon show. And, um, you know, it was my first time working that and, uh, and I, and I really haven't really worked a lot of Lucha shows. So that was some kind of cool to see a little different style and see what they do. And then, uh, you know, the first time that I got to step in the ring, uh, with Pentagon. So, uh, and then moving forward, we, we did the joint show that evening, which obviously was a, a really cool experience. Um, you know, the locker room was great. Guys were working, you know, uh, it was a really kind of laid back atmosphere, but guys wanted to go out there and, and, and really show what they had. So, um, you know, I thought that show was awesome. Very, very successful. Uh, you know, then kind of dipped in and did a little something with ring of honor. And, and I don't have to you know say a whole lot about that. You know, almost 6,000 people, uh, you know, the crowd, the crowd was hot all night. Uh, you know, they had, you know, who's who's, uh, you know, list of people there and, uh, it was a successful night for them. And then House of Hardcore, you know, kind of the, kind of the, you know, heart and soul of, of the, of the you know, pro wrestling right now. And, uh, you know, that show, I think, started at 11.30 at night, and uh, I think my match right about 1.30 a.m. So the fact that, uh, A, the fans were there, uh, and, and, and they were, you know, invested and they were excited to be there, and that the guys all went out there at that time of night after a couple of long days and just put on a hell of a performance and the whole team, you know, up and down the announcers, the camera guys, the whole, the whole thing. Right. So, um, it's, uh, you know, so as much as there's differences, you know, right now what you're seeing is more and more common threads that are running throughout all these different promotions, um, that are, that are thriving and, and are successful. And, and, and that's what I like to see. Thank you. Hey, Austin, this is BQ from the Impact Lounge again. I was fortunate enough to be at the Impact and Lucha Underground show, and I noticed there are a lot of fans there who missed the memo on the uh, collaboration over competition concept that uh, Impact is pushing, and it made me realize yeah. there's still a lot of work a lot of work to do to win over a certain part of the wrestling audience. What do you think is the biggest hurdle, biggest obstacle right now in winning over that portion of the audience who continues to be negative mm-hmm. and sour towards the product? Uh, you know, just stay the course. Consistency. And time, you know, uh, again, you know, as, as I, you know, it's just going to take time. Like we, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a lot of goodwill that has to be earned back, you know? And, and so, um, that's fine. I, you know, I expect you'll be skeptical. I, I, I expect now when I walk out places as the impact world champion that, you know, for right now, that that might start getting me some negative reactions. Uh, that's cool. I understand. That's fine. We'll stay the course. We'll keep doing what we're doing. And, and, and over time, I will keep changing minds and changing opinions. Uh, that's all you can do. 
because I believe I, I kind of believe in the formula right now and, and what's being cultivated. So I think if we just let that continue to grow and, and trust in that, uh, we'll be fine. Hi, Austin. Raj Gary with WrestlingAidCuts.com again. Uh, What's up, Raj? What, what's up? I wanted to know, uh, with Impact, they've, they've brought in a lot of new talent. I wanted to know who some of your favorite up-and-coming talent in Impact are, and, and who could you see being in that main event scene sooner than later? Uh, well, I mean, obviously Brian Cage has stepped in, and it's hard not to notice that guy and a guy that I've you know been in the ring with now a, a number of times. And, um, you know, obviously... If you look at his toolbox, it's uh, overflowing. Uh, so, you know, he's a guy that, with with opportunity and, and time, uh, can make a huge, uh, you know, huge impact. Which, you know, it's, I guess it's a bad pun at this point, but uh, you know, he's one that stands out. Uh, you know, looking at in the X division, I think a guy like Trevor Lee, you know, a guy who was in the X division that can maybe you know branch out of that. Um, you know, Ishimori. I've enjoyed what, what what he's done. I haven't seen a lot of Desmond Xavier yet, but uh, I hear good things about him. You know, he was he was out with uh, over in Japan, so hopefully when he gets back, we'll get we'll get to see what he's about. And uh, you know, there's guys I'm missing. You know, there's guys like Sammy Callahan, who's not necessarily a young guy, but who's starting to make some waves and make some noise, and people are talking about him. Um, you know, Eli Drake, I still think's tremendous talent, and uh, I still think that you know, for him, I think that the, the best is still ahead of him. So. Uh, and there's people I'm missing. I mean, and that just shows right now that there's a, there's a good collection of talent there. And I think what people what people need to understand is that before a lot of these household names that 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 you're you, that you're wearing their t-shirts now and and uh, you're you're huge fans of, you know, they all started somewhere and they all had to make their name somewhere. And, and right now, there's a landscape and impact where where a lot of these guys made the, their names. That opportunity is now opening up for a whole new generation of guys. And uh, there's a lot of talent right there that are going to step up and and be the next generation of household names that we're talking about. Great. Thank you. Hi, Austin. It's Neil Rogers from Calling Sports Magazine again. Um, you wrestle for Defiant Wrestling in Newcastle, where I'm based, and I was wondering how many of the guys there or the performers there would do you think deserve a, an opportunity to showcase themselves on somewhat bigger like Impact Wrestling? Anyone that you've seen that you're particularly impressed with? Yeah, Newcastle, one word. I knew that, but whoever uh, did my website missed the typo. I almost got hammered for it on social media, so I had to fire the guy. Uh, just kidding. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, especially with talking with you know with, with Scott and Don and the guys, as far as you know, when we talk about bringing some fresh talent in and guys around there. I mean, I've been over in England quite a bit, working for both uh, you know Defiant and for IPW UK. And again, that was really the first uh, you know that was really the, the the beginning of this whole belt collector thing, right? Which wasn't really supposed to, it was never supposed to be a thing. But, um, you know, working for these companies and talking creatively what they, what they were talking about doing and, and find this way to kind of for these companies to collaborate and create something interesting and unique in the short term. Um, you know, there's a lot of great talent over there. Uh, you know, Chris Ridgway and, and, and you know, Mark Haskins, who I'm gonna, you know, who's, been, who's been with Impact before. You know, I know I've already, I've already you know, spit his name out of my mouth a couple times as far as a guy, you know, who I'd like to see getting another opportunity. And, um, you know, and then there's just a lot, you know, just, again, what you see is young, hungry guys that are, that are all out there and, and, and they love pro wrestling. And we want to create a place where they can come and showcase it. Austin Harry again from NBC Sports Radio, Pro Wrestling 247 On Demand. Uh, with the change yes, in the scene of professional wrestling in your collection of belts, do you think we may ever see that one champion representing the best of multiple companies with just one main a championship held again, a la the NWA world title? Uh, you know, who knows? Uh, who knows? You know, I mean, I don't think any, I don't think anybody five years ago would have predicted uh, kind of where things are at now or where they're trending. So who knows where, where, where it continues to go? Um, you know, someone, someone, had, someone had suggested to me, you know, after how many, after how many belts am I going to be able to carry them all? And maybe I should just melt them down and make one big one. And, you know, uh, but uh, who knows that concept, you know, you know, it could happen, it could not, but right now I think, you know, companies working together uh, could foster something like that in the future. And obviously right now, NWA is trying to make a resurgence, and who knows, maybe at some point, 10 years down the road, they could they could bring themselves back up to, to maybe be in something like that. Awesome. We have one final email question coming from Alex T. He wants to know, does Sammy Callahan and his antics of late have you and others in the locker room looking over your shoulder? 
Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm the world champ, so I'm always looking over my shoulder. And uh, I always have to be in tune with what's going on. So, yeah, I'm, you know, obviously you're keeping aware of, of the antics of Sammy Callahan. But listen, he's, you know, he, uh, you know, he, he, he did something that, that, you know, shocked a lot of people. And, and he didn't show any remorse for it. And he's using that opportunity to, to make a name for himself and, and make him recognized. And, you know, he's been, he's been doing this for a long time. He's been grinding away. And if this is what he needs to do to kind of, you know, stamp his, his name on the map, then that's what he's going to do. And whether I agree or disagree, I can't blame the guy because this is a, you know, this is an easy industry to, uh, you know, to have longevity and cement your, your, your legacy. And so you know, he's taking his opportunity and, and, and I have to pay attention. Hey, Austin, it's James from the Wrestling Epicenter again. Um, I actually was going to ask this question about a half hour ago. Probably would have been more timely then. But uh, uh, my question was going to be about when we were talking about moves that you wish you had invented. I remembered that when you had your match with Johnny Impact, there was a veteran wrestler who was, I'm not going to name names, I don't want to cause heat, but he was critical of a move you guys did on the apron, saying it's stupid and dangerous to do moves on the apron. Kind of wanted to get your take on that, and 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 why do you think there is such a, a mindset of that that I don't like that kind of stuff? You know what I mean? Uh, well, I can't speak for other wrestlers in other spots, but I'll just say this: as far as I'm concerned, um, I'm out there to do my job, and I'm out there to win matches and perform and all those good things. But uh, I would never do anything out there that that would uh, knowingly put my opponent at serious risk. You know, we all go out there and we hurt each other. That's part of the business. Uh, we don't go out there and try to injure each other so we can't go and put bread on our table. Uh, so I'd never, I'd never compromise uh, my colleagues like that because I have too much respect for them. Um, so that's all I can say about that as far as anything I do in the ring. Um, uh, listen, do I see guys that are taking unnecessary risks on certain spots? Sure. Uh, do, I, do I disagree with it in certain contexts and in certain situations? Sure, I do. Uh, but I've been there too. So, uh, you know, I, I think that there, there's a fine line between, you know, sitting there and, and, and trying to judge something from an armchair and, and deem what's acceptable and not acceptable because um, until you're in the situation, uh, it, it's, it's a little hard. Thank you. Oh, I can, you know, I can say I'm, I'm always safe in there. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm safe in there and, uh, Come here. Come here, Sean. Hi, Austin. This is Mewish again from wrestling-infos.de. Uh, my question is, uh, Impact Wrestling has already been uh, or doing a show in Germany or a tour in Germany several years ago. Uh, would you consider coming back to Germany or working for uh, another German promotion like NEW or WXW? Uh, would you consider going back to Germany or coming with impact to Germany? Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've, I've personally had, you know, discussions about coming back over there. It's just, it's been a scheduling thing. Just going to be able to make it work as far as scheduling, but I'd love to come back over there. I worked for WXW a uh, number of years ago and it was a lot of fun. Uh, and, and, and yeah, I mean, I think impact would be looking to expand anywhere that, that made sense and where there's a, a fan base to go and, and run a show. And I think Germany would be included. All right, thanks. Hi, Austin. Uh, Ryan Bowman from thegorillaposition.com again. <clears throat> As you head into redemption, how big do you think that this event is for Impact, and how big do you think it'll be for you personally? What do you think the fans can expect? Uh, obviously, it's it's important. I, you know, I think listen. I think every every pay per view is important. This one might have a little extra uh, importance to it just being you know this first one coming back and uh, i'm excited for it I, I really am you know and i think that you know through all the crazy events or whatever happened it's almost created more excitement and unpredictability to what's going to happen so um yeah i i, I think uh i think this could be hopefully for for impact one of those events that we look back and go this was uh this was definitely a moment where we said we're heading in the right direction and we started gaining some momentum for that Thank you so much for your time today. Well, Austin, I appreciate your time very much. We're, uh, we'll wrap it up with that question, but I, I, I do want to ask you two final questions. Uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't follow up on uh, Stephanie's question for you or comment to you earlier. What do you got planned for Sunday? 
April 15th, not for tax day, for your birthday. Oh, man. Uh, it's, it's, it, we, we got a couple things planned out here. It's, it's going to be a good time. We got some people flying in from, from different parts of the world and, uh, and the country, and uh, it's going to be a nice little celebration of, uh, of the first 40 years of, of my life. And uh, yeah, we're gonna start it on we're, we're gonna start it on Saturday and roll it into Sunday, and uh, it should be a nice couple of days of uh, I think uh, well earned rest and relaxation. And it's you know it's nice to be able to kind of take a take a couple of days off when you need it, take a couple of days off when you want to recharge your body, uh, your mind, and your soul. And I think that's what this weekend will do for me. Birthday celebration on the fifteenth, victory party on the twenty second for you. I like it. All righty. Final thought heading into uh, Redemption, April 22nd in Orlando. you got Pentagon Junior and Phoenix, three-way tag, a three-way match for the uh, World Championship. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, again, everything in this business is about opportunity. And through circumstances, an opportunity has presented itself for Pentagon, you know, and uh, Phoenix to step in the ring. Uh Live on pay-per-view, Impact Wrestling World Championship. And that, again, a week ago, a whole different ball game. Now that's what's happening. And, uh, and it's exciting. And, it's, and uh, you know, I think that from what I'm seeing, what I'm reading, people are intrigued and they're, and they're going to be tuning in. And uh, if you're on the fence about it, I'd say tune in and check it out because, uh, yeah, it's going to be redemption. And I think everyone's going to walk out there with a little chip on their shoulder, some bigger than others, and also to prove themselves and kind of put our stamp on what this new impact's all about. Alrighty, Austin, I appreciate your time very much. Media, I appreciate you guys calling in. Next week we'll be back with another Impact Wrestling superstar, and uh, I am trying to get one of the the big names that I know you guys will all look forward to speaking to. Trust me on this one for next week. Again, thank you again for calling in. Austin, always a pleasure talking to you, and thanks for your time. Thanks, everybody.